All right, so in this video, we are going to cover how to create a post through a user. So let's log in first. I'm going to use this John user and I'll log in. And right here in the user's dashboard, we are going to create a form. So let's go back to our code and open dashboard. And right under that H1, I'm going to create the form. So first I'm going to use a wrapper for this with the class of card and margin bottom four. And let's have an H2 for the title that says create a new post with some classes and we want a post form. And for the action, if we go to our post controller, remember this store method is in charge of storing or saving a post in our database. Now we don't have to use this create method since we are using dashboard to render our form. And if we go back to our terminal and run PHP artisan route list, we can see that a store method corresponds to this route. So posts dot store and has the HTTP method post. So this is the route we are going to use in the action attribute of our form. So let's just use the route helper function and pass in posts dot store. All right. So the first step is to add the CSRF token. And again, I'm going to make some comments here, post title. I'm going to go to the login page and just grab one of these input fields, maybe this email one and paste it here. So the label should be for the title and it should say post title, the name attribute for the input field is going to be title, the value also going to be title. So I'm just going to select all these emails and just change them to title. So this is our first field. And for the body of the post, we want a text area. I'm just going to paste that input field once again, change this to post body and change the label. And right under the label, I'm going to create a text area and let's give it a name body and doesn't need the ID and the columns, but I'm going to keep the rows so I can give it a default value of five or six. Then I'm going to cut these classes from this input field, which we don't need, paste it here. And for the value, we don't want to use the value attribute. We want to actually paste it in between the text area tags and just change this one to body and, and then get rid of this input field. So let's make sure we change these titles to body as well. And that's our post content. You can change the row number if you want this to be smaller at first. Then we will have our button that says create with the class of BTN. There we go, that is our form. All right, let's test this out. So we want to go to the function that handles this route. In our post controller, we want to die and dump just something so we know it's working. So let's submit the form and see what happens. And keep in mind, we still have this store post request class here. So let's go back to the form press create, we get this action is unauthorized. So let's see what is this class. If we open our project under app HTTP, we have this requests folder that was created when we created our model using an A flag. And we have these two classes, a store post request and update post request. If we open the first one, a store post request, you notice we have this function that is called authorized and it's returning false. This is why we are getting that unauthorized error. And also we have this rules function. So basically when we use the A flag on creating a model, Laravel will create this class for us so we can add our policies here if we want to, and we can add our rules. So it is coming from another class. In my opinion, this is too much for a simple project that we are working, unless you have a huge amount of rules and policies that you want to apply. So what I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna get rid of this folder all at once. So let's delete that. And as soon as we do that, we get these errors because we are importing those files here. So let's get rid of these imports. And inside our store method, we want to change this to request from HTTP, all right? And make sure it is imported up here. And we want to do the same thing in the update method before we get an error. So let's go down. We have this update method that is looking for that class that doesn't exist anymore. So we just want to use our request class again. All right, so now we should get this die and dump. Let's submit the form. There we go. We get that die and dump, which means it's working. So we need to validate the fields, then create a post, then redirect the users, maybe to their dashboard. So let's just start with validation. And we already know how to do this. Let's grab the request object and use the validate method on this one. So we have only two fields. We have a title that we want to make sure it is filled. So it is required. And there is a maximum value for that, which is 255. Then we have the body that is just going to be required. These are the only rules we want to apply. Let's see if the errors work. So 
let's press create we get those error messages so it is working now we want to create a post basically an instance of a class we already did this in the user registration when we created a user instance of the user class so let's use our post model and use the create method just like the register function if we go to our post class for a moment we are saying that we expect a title and a body so let's do that let's save these fields inside a variable remember it would give us an array and we can just pass it down here now according to our model this should work but let's see if it does so back to our form if i try to just add some content here and press create we get this error that says user id does not have a default value so back to our project let's open create posts table migration file remember in our migration file we said we want a user id so we can connect this post to a specific user however in our post model in this fillable array, we are not saying that we expect a user ID. And remember, when we create an instance of a model, the create method is expecting these properties. However, our table is expecting another property, which is user ID. Now, there are two ways to solve this problem. So the first way is to manually add that user ID. So we want to accept it as a property in our fillable array. And when we create our post here, not only we want to pass the fields, we want to pass the user ID. So we could just pass an array here and say user underscore ID is going to be the authenticated user. So we can use the auth facade again and grab the ID. So this is a shortcut to grab the user ID. Then we can use the rest of the fields. So the title and the body. And I'm using the spread operator here to spread this array into individual elements. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to go back to our dashboard. Let's say post one and yada, yada, yada. Press create. We get OK. That means this was successful. Let's check out our database. Back to MySQL, I'm going to select everything from posts. We get 18 rows before we had 17. And if we scroll up just a bit, we have this post one, which we just created. The ID of the post is 18. The ID of the user is one. And we already know if we grab everything from our users, we have one user that has the ID of one. So this approach works, but actually this will give us more problems further in the way when we want to grab posts that belong to a user. There is a better way to do this. Basically, we want to create a relationship between our post class and a user class. And we want to create the post through the user. Let's go to our user model. And at the very bottom, after this casts function, we want to create another function here. Let's say public function, and I'm going to call it posts. And we want to return a has many relationship. So this part is not necessary specifying the return type, but I'm doing it just to be clear that we want to return a has many relationship and it actually needs to be imported up here from eloquent relations. Now in this function, we want to return a has many relationship and we want to say this class or the user class that we are working on has many, use the has many function, post. So we can pass our post model class here saying that this user class has many posts class. And that's how we create a relation from users to posts. So now let's see what we get when we actually call this function. Let's go back to our post controller and I'm going to get rid of this statement right here. And let's just die and dump before this validation that auth user. So we get the user instance. Let's just go to dashboard and press create here. We get our user John, which is under attributes. Now let's call that post function, which is available on the user's instance and see what does this one return. So press create. This time we get a has many relations relationship. So we know the connection is successful. And we want to call the create method, which we did down here on this posts method. So I'm going to cut this statement and get rid of that die and dump. And down here, we want to say create a post through the user instance. If we just pass the create method here, which now expects a title and a body. So we can just pass down this array of fields. Now we need to actually go to our posts model again and get rid of this user ID because now we are not saying that we want to fill in the user ID. The user ID will be filled in automatically through this relation. So let's see if this works. Let's go to our dashboard and create a post here. So I'm going to say John's post. So it's clear and some content press create. We don't get anything because I deleted that die and dump. But if we go to the home page, we have our latest post, which this user created. And we can also check our database. We have 19 rows now. 
and this is our latest post so this is the first type of relation we've learned and i recommend take a look at the documentation and learn more about relationships but basically that's how you create one all right so now let's redirect the user back to their dashboard and let's add a with method remember before in our auth controller we used this with error function that would return with error as the name suggests now the with method would just create a key value pair in our session where we can grab it in our view so the with method would take the key and the value Let's call the key success. And I want to say your post was created. Now to grab this in our view, we can use the session function. Maybe right above this title, I'm going to just create a comment and say session messages, and then maybe a div. So let's just have a P tag for now and say, and use the session function and then pass the key that we want to show. So we called it success. All right, so let's test this out. We are going back to our dashboard. Let's create another post. I'm going to say post three with some text press create we are back with this your post was created so this is fine right now but best practice is to wrap this in an if statement so we want to say if this session message exists so i'm going to copy it and just paste it inside this if statement then render that div so we can wrap this whole div with this if statement now we could go ahead and style this but i want to make this into a component and show you how we can pass props to components which is quite easy let's do that in the next video